When it comes to the run-up and the crow hop, in my opinion, Macbeth is the standard. He's the player that you should copy. When I was working on the crow hop, I noticed that he maintained his center of gravity and his athletic position all the way through the hop. I'm not saying this line above his head is a perfect science, but when I get to the part of the hop, just notice how his feet don't come that far off the ground, and he doesn't raise up over the line that I drew. Not a perfect science, but it's just an idea of keeping body control. And as he hops, he maintains that body control. So the upper body and the head don't raise up. He just skips barely off the ground. Maintaining this position is extremely important to keep the momentum. It's a mechanism to allow you to move quicker down the tee pad without losing that momentum. And if you jump out of it, it ruins the timing and you won't get all that momentum. So this is why I consider this a very advanced move. Let's get into it. I'm gonna talk about something that I wish I knew when I started reinventing my form. Since I know a lot of you are gonna be doing it, this is something that may not apply to everybody. I'm just gonna talk about what it did for me. If I could go back to my old self, when I was reinventing my form, I would have told myself, stop hopping. Cause you're not actually hopping. What you're doing is jumping. And when you jump, you mess up the momentum. You mess up the timing and you make it very hard to implement new things because no matter whose channel you're learning from or whoever your disc golf coach is, if you don't go slow enough and control your momentum the right way, it's gonna be very hard to implement new things. When I first started, my X steps on like a 300 foot shot looked like this. If I could go back and say it to myself, I would say, get grounded, ground yourself. Stop jumping because it's throwing off your momentum. I came to understand that if you're building momentum right here and then you jump and you flail your arms around and then you land, for me, I lost the momentum that I got all the way up to the jump. And so I'd land, my timing would be completely off. Well, I hadn't even learned timing yet. I would tell myself this, in the future, you will do a crow hop but you will not use that crow hop unless you're throwing 500 feet, hands down. It doesn't matter. If you are crow hopping, that means you're running really fast up. And if you're running really fast up, that means you're building a lot of momentum. And if you jump too high, you're gonna lose that momentum. If you put a, are you kidding me? Idea of reinventing your form and doing it a certain way is so that you use every part of your body into the shot. When you create momentum, you want to use all of it. You don't want to waste any of it or do anything unnecessarily. The number one rule with momentum, for me anyway, is less is more. You don't need a lot of momentum to throw far. You should not be hopping unless you're throwing a max distance shot with a long run up. The whole point here is if I could go back and talk to my 300 foot self, I would say you need to go as slow as you possibly can until you actually can use that momentum. Nobody should be going faster than this when they're working on their form right now. The slingshot, the rubber band effect is a development that takes time. Slow yourself down 75, 80%, 90%.
Less is more. Less is more. <laughs>